80s. Love 80s. I grew up with this chap on screen. You'll know him straight away. Johnny Ball, how are you, sir? I'm very well. I really am. Very well indeed. I tell you what, you've not changed a bit, have you? You've not changed one bit. Well, I really... I really... <laughs> I've wrinkled a bit, certain parts of me, but I'm wearing a jumper, so you can't tell. Right. <laughs> but, with, but I want to have a walk down memory lane with you. But first of all, I, I don't know if it's true or not. Were you in the forces before you became a big TV celeb? I was in, I was in the RAF, 1957-89. Uh, I was called up for national service, but I signed on for three years because I, I, my, my schooling was a failure, you see, and I left school at 16. So I, I'd marked my card from friends and people who advised me, and I joined the RAF for three years, and it was my university. It really was. I learned everything I would have learned in a university while I was in the RAF. So it worked out very well. I loved it, every I, minute of it. I, I, I'm fascinated on that, that you said your schooling was a failure, and then you do all these educational, clever programmes. You know, Very odd, you see. I was, I was top of the class at 11, and uh, went to... Then we moved. We moved from Bristol to Bolton, where my parents moved, and I found them. And, uh, and so I moved as well. And uh, I went to Bolton County Grammar School. And in the first year, I won a maths prize and I won a chess prize in the first year. And uh, uh, five years later, two O levels thrown out, absolutely no good. I just didn't get on with them at all. But as soon as I left, I, I had no trouble at all. And uh, I, I just knew that, if you like, education had, had let me down terribly. And I've been recovering ever since. <laughs> Well, let's have a walk down memory lane then. Uh, I bet you look back at the 1980s, uh, late 70s, early 80s era of, of children's TV with great affection, don't you? Because you were in our lives quite a bit, you know. Um, you know, I'm just looking down the list here. But, you know, think of a number, think again, uh, think backwards, think this way. And then obviously the one I remember, because I'm 40, so I'm looking mid-1980s for me, is Johnny Ball Reveals All. What were those days like, Johnny? They, they were fabulous. Uh, I, I, when I was in 1967, I got a call. I was doing BBC radio as a stand-up comic then, and I was doing BBC radio. And the producer got a call. He said, I've been asked to, to put you up for something. Will you go for a meeting with the BBC? Uh, and I thought, it's got to be a crackerjack, isn't it? BBC television, it's got to be a crackerjack. So I went to this interview, and I got the job in Two minutes. I knew I got the job. He said, oh, you're going to be wonderful in play school. <laughs> I said, what's play school? And he said, it's uh, it's on at 11 o'clock in the morning for under fives on BBC Two. Well, nobody had BBC Two in those days. The first couple of years of BBC Two. And um, so I didn't I didn't want to do it. I was off. And uh, he said, go on, have a, give it a go. You have to do an audition anyway. So I did the audition and I started and I loved it. I stayed for 16 years. And I, I just loved the integrity of the people who did it. And I, I, I loved it. Once you got over the, the problem that you were an adult talking to under fives, once you gripped that, then you were OK. But gripping that took me three weeks of play school before I really grasped it and could sh shut out any adult thoughts, if you like, and concentrate on, on working with the kids. So I loved it. <clears throat> and I stayed 16 years I was in play school. Uh, but apparently I was the only one who resigned. And I resigned because uh, I just had too much work on with the think programs I was writing in those days. And I turned down, amazingly, the, I was writing comedy for Cracker Jack for a while. And on the last series, they asked me if I would do it, do Cracker Jack. And I said, I can't, I'm just too busy with everything else. So I turned down Cracker Jack. Um, and stuck with my factual information shows, which I loved. Do you, uh, I mean, what would you say back then? You had to be a bit of a, I, I say this affectionately, John, right? Um, you've got to be a bit of a nutcase on the telly back then to get the attention, to get to. Get yeah, well, to as a stand up comic, you've got to be a nutcase in, in a way, you know, only a fool would try it in the first place. And if you don't succeed in the first place, you get out very quickly in comedy because it hurts if, if, you, if you die a death in, in, as a comic. So you have to be good at it. And I was good. I love people, you see. And I was a bottling red coat for three years. <laughs> And I just, I just love people and uh, being with people. So it was, it was an enjoyment with the audience with me rather than my material. It was, you know, my material was okay. So when television came calling, I thought, no, my television with the clubs 
material is not right for television. I would want to do something else. I would have wanted to do what Ronnie Barker did and wrote sketches and be a character performer, you know, not be Johnny Ball, the person in the clubs. I didn't want to do that. So I turned it down. Um, I turned down the office and, um, and eventually I drifted over to children's television because I loved it. And then I started writing uh, lots and lots of stuff and 20 series of programs I wrote eventually, you know, and it was, it was lovely. And then when I finished that, the corporate world beat a pass to my door. I used to, honestly, this conversation happened so many times. I would go into a boardroom of a major company you know, it could be British Gas, it could be British Leyland, Rolls or any. I walked into all these boardrooms time and time again. And as I put my briefcase down and sat down, I could see them all look around at each other because they didn't recognize me because I was on children's television, but they were working. And then the boss would say, I haven't seen you myself, but my wife tells me you're very popular during the daytime. <laughs> What he meant by that, I don't know. <laughs> and that happened. And I, I had, in the 90s, I worked for dozens of companies, dozens, dozens of them, and uh, made videos for them, did projects for them. And eventually wrote uh, an educational stage musical for National Grid, and then one for Norweb, and then three others um, for the Department of Education, BBC uh, the, Blair's government, the Department of Education. And I wrote those and toured those. And I wasn't in television then. And people thought, oh, where's he gone? You know, he's fallen out. Well, I, I just had a wonderful time touring. We'd played to, oh, upwards of 160,000 kids a, a year in the shows. I'd, I'd work the <clears throat> 200 seat, two, 2,000 seaters in Manchester. And we'd sell them out twice a day, twice in a day, 10 o'clock and one fifteen. And uh, we'd do 4,000 kids in a day, you know. And, uh, and it was great touring. I'd written them and everything. And that's where I was. And I had a, a wonderful, wonderful time. And in 2000, I had a show in the Dome, which I produced. I had five actors play it. And it sold every place for the entire year in the Dome. It was very successful. But nobody knew about it. Um, but, but that's the kind of life I had then, you know, after the television. But it was because of the television. And it was because of my comedy training, a stand-up comedy training. You know, if you can write a joke about something, you can write seriously about it as well, you know. So it's good. <clears throat> so the thing is, what I wanted to ask you is, um, what happened to children's TV? Um, because I remember, like I said, growing up with yourself, growing up with people like Timmy Mallet, Tommy Boyd, uh, a number of other people, <clears throat> yeah. children's TV quite regularly. And then before you know it, I was I was a married man and I'm like, my kids have got nothing to watch at tea time. That's right. You know? That's right. That's right. So what happened was this. Um, the children's always had to fight for its budget. But the BBC was so good. Our programs were so good. Blue Peter was very solid, you know, but lots and lots of people watch it. Very big figures, you know. Play School had a turn-on figure at four o'clock. The television was dead till four in the afternoon. And then the switch-on figure was four million, bang. Well, wow. four million switched on every day for play school. And then by the time it was uh, half past four or five o'clock, we were getting five million, six million. Then when it's the news and when it's the evening programs. So, but the adults said, we want this programming. We want this programming. We could be talking to people at home, you know, and they wanted daytime programming. And so our budgets were squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And eventually they said, you can have your own channels. Well, you had your own channels, but nobody watched them. And I'd left by then anyway. But it's a tragedy. And, and it, I, I was there when top bosses, Michael Grade, um, 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 Billy Cotton, Bill Cotton, were in the room when our financial boss was saying, that you're dismantling the whole thing and it will never be the same again. And they weren't even really listening. And it was very, very sad, very sad. Um, and I think children generally have suffered from that. I think education generally has suffered from that. And it's, it's so sad. You know, I was all right because I came through it and I had other things to do. But uh, oh, it's terrible. So um, what's next for Johnny Ball then? So after the lockdown, after the pandemic, you, you're going to be allowed out. <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've, well, I've got a. Sh- I've, I've, ri- I've written. Um, I've written nine books, and my, my latest one was Wonders Beyond Numbers, which is history of maths. It's about five hundred pages, and it took me four years to write. And I've written that, and it's it's gone very well. So I set up a show. So I have Wonders Beyond Numbers, the touring show, and I mean, I'm not. I'm not north of Birmingham yet. Right. Oh, I am. I'm, I am. I'm coming to Crewe. I'm coming to the Lyceum at Crewe. Not far and from us. I think it's going to be cancelled. Yeah, it's down the road. But it's. I'm, I'm there in March, but it's oh. going to be cancelled. Yeah, that's, I, not I happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. But I'll be there in the autumn. So I'm touring that, and that's very good. <clears throat> and I've had another idea, and I'm writing, you can't believe it. I've always loved rhyme, and I've always written uh, rhyme. So I'm writing a book, which is basically in the history of maths and science, and it's all in rhyme. And it's it's massive. And I'm up to 50, 60 pages. I'm up to half the book because it will spread out and be much, much more um, in, in, in rhyme, you know. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the invention of zero. So here's a way to do your sums an easy way. So don't be clumped. What's this new? What's this new invention? What is it? It's nothing. This new idea will change the world. Watch carefully as we unfurl the secret to each boy and girl. What is it? It's nothing. It's so, so simple, but beware. Use nothing wisely and take care. If you put it down, remember where or when you look, it won't be there. Use it in disgrace. Make room for it. Come on, make space. Put it in its proper place. What is it? It's nothing. And then it goes to the the maths of of, um, the Greek maths, Roman maths, and then, and then, in the valley of the Indus, some of the brain waves so tremendous. Have number symbols one to nine, use those numbers all the time, but always be aware of space and put them in their proper place. So if you write, say, three, two, one, it means 321. But if you take away the tens, you'd leave 31. That doesn't make sense. The T, the three still needs to be 300. So keep the digits split asundered and to remember that there's nothing there. Put a ring around it to mark it. There. This unknown chap became a hero the day that he invented zero. And that that was in one of my shows. And uh, so all those are going. So there's music and everything. And I'm, I've written loads and loads of, of rhymes now. Um, you know. I'll tell you what, Johnny, you've still, you've still got it. You've still got it. I'm, I'm now 40. I'm 41 at the back end of this year. And you just had me. You had me there. And I'm like... Oh my days! I'm ten years old again. You know this is fantastic. Oh uh, yeah. Well, well, the show when, when I do the show, I finish the show at uh, the first half of the show, the stage show, with a streak because Archimedes got in the bath and then he jumped out of the bath and ran down the street in the nude, crying "Eureka!" Everybody else is going, "You streaker." You don't streak. Uh, uh, ah, well, <laughs> you'll have to come to the show. You'll have to come to see the show, but the streak is in. Yes. The streak- <laughs> The first half, but it might not be me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Johnny Ball, Johnny I Ball. I used to come on with it one show. I used to come on in a bar and do this. It is, uh, 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 <laughs> and I used to do this number, um, which goes, Eureka, I found it. I really have, I found it. Eureka, I found it. And it wasn't even lost. I'm truly astounded. The whole world is confounded. My science is propounded. I truly am the boss. Get in a bath brim full with water and you sink just like you ought to. But what happens to the water? As you sink in more and more, the water stops up on the floor. Eureka, I found it. A rebel. And that's it. And I explained the whole theory and why he's straight, you see. And uh, so, so the street's got to be in it, and it closes the first half, you know, while everybody runs out in embarrassment, calls the police, and, and <laughs> <laughs> closes the theatre. <laughs> Johnny Ball, it's been an absolute pleasure to connect with you anyway and reminisce and hear that you still, you've still got it. Can I ask how old you are now, Johnny? Can I ask? I'm 82 and uh, coping very well. With 82, it, uh, sir. Do you know, if, I'm, if I've got that much energy and passion in everything at 82 that I, I've done well. Mate, you are absolutely anybody, a legend. Thank you. If anybody told me I'd have this energy at my age, I would have snatched their hand off. I said, I'll, I'll cover that. So, yeah, the tour will be going at least this next couple of years. Um, Fabulous. So, uh, I look forward how's, to seeing how's, everyone. How's the family? How's Zoe and uh, and your lad and, and uh, to the right? Zoe's all right. Lo- He's very talented. Where she gets it from, I have no idea. But... <laughs> <laughs> No, she's having a great time. She's, she's <laughs> lovely, you know. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, fantastic. This is great. This is absolutely great. Uh, Johnny Ball, um, take it easy, fella, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, thank you for being you. And thank you for making all our childhoods so, so fantastic back in the day. A pleasure. And you know where I am. And everybody, you know where I am. Just come on. Just Google Johnny Ball and come on to me and have a chat. I am not retired.